Hey, welcome back. That's Jerry O'Brien. I'm Christopher Harrison. Uh, we've talked uh, a bit about what uh, Xamarin is all about, took a look at how to do the installation, but chances are if you're a developer, what you really want to see is some code, which we're going to get to right after a couple of real quick slides. So let's talk about how to get started with that first Xamarin project, or Hello Xamarin, if you will. Now, again, the great advantage to doing Xamarin is that you get to use the tools and the skills that you already are familiar with, that you already have, to create projects that can target all of those various devices. And so creating that Xamarin project is just like creating any other Xam or creating any other Visual Studio project. Uh, it's just simply now going to be Xamarin. Now, when you go in and set this up, you have really two ways that you can create your project. One way is to have that shared library that we talked about previously, and then all of the facades for those three different device types. Or you can use Xamarin Forms. Now, what's amazing about Xamarin Forms is that you can create one project and write that one project in .NET and target all three of those platforms again with that one project. And in fact, that is what Jerry is going to show us how to do. Absolutely. Cool. And I'm not going to type any code. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to do a bunch of point and clicks and show how things work. I love it. We'll demonstrate the code. We'll talk a little bit about it. Of but, course. Yeah. But nobody wants to see me typing code. I have fat fingers and we'd be here for a little while. We'd be here for a little while. All right. So let's take a look at the PC. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on creating a, uh, a Xamarin Forms application. Uh, and we're going to create a new project. Now, what I'm demonstrating here is running Visual Studio on a PC. And the reason I'm demonstrating it this way is because the first time you fire this up and you start creating a new project on the PC, there's going to be um, some Xamarin login requirements and there's going to be some connectivity requirements for you to connect to the Mac. Um, so again, assuming that your, you know, your environment may be that you're programming on a PC and you have perhaps a Mac server, a Mac mini sitting in the office somewhere that a bunch of folks are accessing, um, this is kind of this, the environment type that you'll be looking at uh, working through. Um, so again, we're not assuming that I'm on the MacBook Pro here with everything integrated into the one machine. So again, as Christopher mentioned, hey, it, everything's familiar. We've got Visual Studio up and running. We click on the new project link over here on our start bar. And under the Visual C Sharp template tree, we find cross-platform. So this is what we're going to focus on. But before we get into creating that project, I just want you to understand that there are other application types that you can create here. And one of them is iPhone as an example. And these ones here are going to be iPhone specific, right? So you're not targeting anything else but the iPhone platform or the iPad platform or the Android platform, okay? So these are just examples of the different types of apps that you can create in Visual Studio for that specific platform. But as we talked about, we want to focus on that cross-platform. Let's get the biggest bang for our buck. Let's create one project right in C-sharp code and have it deployed across all of our platforms. We're going to create our new application. And what did you call it, Christopher? You didn't call it Welcome Xamarin. You no, called it Hello, Hello Xamarin. Hello Xamarin. So we'll call it Hello Xamarin. That's a better name than App 2. Yes. And, <laughs> and as you can see by how long it took me to type the title, you don't want me typing code. <laughs> so again, you know, your standard Visual Studio options here, you can create a directory for the solution. We can add it to source control. We're not going to deal with that today. We just want to give you an idea of how we create a Xamarin Forms application. Now, as Visual Studio goes through the process of creating it, you'll see it's creating a project, um, and it's going to create a bunch of uh, projects underneath the solution. So like most Visual Studio projects that we create, we have one solution, and then that solution will contain some different projects. We will have the shared uh, code, which will sit in that portable class library, and then we will have uh, separate projects for each of the platforms that we're going to target. So now that Visual Studio has created the project for us, a couple of things happen here. And this is one of the first steps that you're going to see is 
the Xamarin Mac agent instructions. So because Visual Studio recognizes this as a Xamarin project, it knows it needs to connect to that Xamarin Mac agent, and it's telling you that the first thing that you need to do is ensure that remote logon or remote login is enabled on your Mac. So let's look at the Mac for just one second, because if you're a Visual Studio developer or a PC developer and you're not familiar with the Mac computer, somebody like myself, somebody like yourself, we have to go into the Mac. So let's look at the system preferences on the Mac here on the left hand side. So on the Mac platform, we are in system preferences under sharing. We have to ensure that we have remote login enabled. Now, your administrators may deal with ensuring that, you know, certain users are allowed to access it. We're not going to go into Mac permissions here, but if you're the administrator on your Mac machine, simply enabling remote login is what you want to do. While you're in here, it's also a potentially good idea to pop into your network settings just in case you don't know what your IP address is, and you'll need to get it up here because that's what we're going to use to actually connect to the Xamarin Mac agent running on the Mac. So let's pop back over to the PC. And we have our remote login screen. Once you've seen this the first time, you can simply say, yeah, I got it, don't show me again, and click OK. If you step through the steps, it'll tell you exactly how to do it as well if you're not familiar with it. So we're all done. And now the first thing it says, hmm, there's no remotely accessible Macs detected on your network, so we need to add a Mac. And here's where, guess what? That IP address is very important. So let's go ahead and add that IP address that we had for our Mac that is running right next to my PC. Let's click on Add. It'll do a retrieving of an SSH fingerprint, and this is where it's important for you, again, to know which user accounts are configured, and we will go through the process of logging in to the Mac. The retrieving SSH fingerprint for the first time sometimes takes a little bit of time for it to pop up. The other important thing to note as well is that if you have the Mac agent running on a machine, depending on the licensing that you have enabled, you may or may not be able to have more than one computer connected to that Mac agent at one time. All right, so we've successfully logged in to our Xamarin Mac agent, which is currently running on my little MacBook Pro over here on the left-hand side. And we can see in the Xamarin Mac agent dialog that we are indeed connected, and our little chain link icon here shows us that we are connected and ready to go. Oh, I, I, I get it. That's, that's clever. It's a chain link. So you're, you're linked. We're linked. That's We're linked. Clever. I didn't come up with it, so I'm not taking credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the first time you create your uh, Xamarin Forms application, you're going to get a getting started, or getting started window that pops up. I almost called this a button, and it's kind of big for a button. And uh, you can go ahead and have a look at this. It talks about next steps. Uh, some great resources to download, talking about pre-built templates, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go ahead and take a look at that, but we're going to close it down for right now. And we're going to focus specifically on dealing with what we now have for a solution with the projects within uh, Visual Studio. So the first project in our solution is called Hello Xamarin, and it's got portable in parentheses. So this is our portable class library project. We have an Android project with appropriate properties, references, assets, resources, etc. We have a Hello Xamarin.iOS project. We have a Hello Xamarin Windows Phone project. And one that it didn't create for us was a, a Hello Windows project. But again, we're going to focus primarily on the three mobile platforms. So that's why we have these three projects available. Now, what's important for us to understand is how this project is going to be generated by using Xamarin Forms. If you're familiar with iOS and uh, you're used to dealing with the interface builder, the, the UI builder, or you're used to dealing with the main activity and uh, the XML file for Android applications to create that user interface, Xamarin Forms kind of changes that up a little bit. And what we're going to focus on here in this particular uh, project template that was created is the use of the app class and the configuration or the, uh, uh, the way that it's actually writing the information out to the screen. So this is a really simple application. There's not a, a ton of different code or anything here, but it's just, again, we're trying to give you an idea of what the uh, project structure looks like. Within our uh, constructor for the app class, we have the root page of our application. So the main page is going to use a content page. We set up a stack layout. We set up center for the vertical options of this, and within the children, or sorry, a child of that page, we're going to create a new label, set the text alignment to center, 
And as I said, I'm not writing any code because what we're going to do is we're simply going to allow Visual Studio or the Xamarin Forms to display Welcome to Xamarin Forms on the screen. Within our app.cs class, we also have our on start, on sleep, and on resume uh, events that are available for us. Now, let's take a, a quick look at some of the uh, project specific attributes. Again, if you're a Xamarin developer, if we double click on properties, you'll see some of the configuration options in here that you should be familiar with as a Xamarin developer. We can compile using a specific Android version, and in this case, we're using the latest one. Um, so unless you have a specific need to target other platforms, you know, you're probably going to be on your latest one. Again, you can change your uh, minimum Android uh, target API level here and a targeted API, <clears throat> excuse me, in this case, we're using uh, use compile using the SDK version. Uh, you also have your Android manifest tab, in which case you would set your application name and your package name, versioning information, and of course, all of your permissions that you might want that application to have. We can also take a look at the Xamarin.iOS properties. And we can see in here that there are a lot of familiar options for iOS developers. We have our SDK versions that we can work with. If we look at the iOS application tab, this is where we give it the name. This is where we would set our identifier, version information, devices, whether we're targeting universal, iPad, iPhone, etc. Supported device orientations, again, for iPhone and iPad. And then, of course, a very important bundle signing option. And we'll talk about this in uh, the, one of the later modules is we talk about deploying to an actual device itself. And iOS is one of the more complex ones that, that we will deal with. So this just gives you an idea of uh, some of the properties for those different types of projects. And of course, with the Windows Phone one, if we look at the properties here, again, if you're a, uh, used to developing for Windows Forms, we have our favorite startup object and we have application specific settings, supported cultures, uh, you can set specific build pro or options, et cetera, from each one of these projects. So these are platform-specific configurations. Now, how does this application actually display the content on our screen? Well, let's go back real quick, take a look at our app.cs. And again, notice what I said here was we have one label that has text, Welcome to Xamarin Forms here on the screen. That doesn't do anything yet until we get into each one of our individual projects. If we step into mainactivity.cs in our Android application, you'll notice that one of the things we do is load application, new app. Let's get your font size uh, a little bigger. How big would you like to make it? Uh, you know, say I can 24. Just, you want to bump it up 24? I can just do it. Ah, there we go. Is that Done. better? Okay, perfect. So, loading application or load application new app. So, we're going to load that new app class in the main activity. So, again, if you're an Android developer, what are we dealing with for the UI? Well, you're dealing with activity. So, main activity being that first one that will load up. In iOS applications, we focus on our app delegate, right? So, again, in here, how are we getting to that point? Load application, new app. So, that's basically what's going to bring up the UI for our application. And Lo and behold, within the Windows Form application, we have a mainpage.xaml, but we also have mainpage.xaml.cs. And guess what we do? We load the application, new hello world xamarin.app. So kind of a really quick rundown. That's basically what our project structure looks like for a Xamarin Forms application mm -hmm. supporting three mobile platforms, Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. And so the bulk of our code then is just in that one main project, and we've just got basically shims and all the others to go ahead and display the uh, the appropriate content. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Okay, perfect. I love it. All right. Well, now that we've got that all set up, I guess the next step then is to take a look at emulators, which will be the next module. Yes.